Hello gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. Yes, you read that thumbnail correct. As of the time of this recording, this is the rank one Necro IA build on PCNA and it's been done with one bar. I'm totally sure we'll get leapfrog here soon, but for now, this is it. In this video description, I have a link to the Twitch VOD where I streamed the Arc 8 to Arc 9 push if you wanted to see a bit of higher end gameplay. I'm going to go over two setups for you. One is the final version of the build where you'll be at from Arc 4 or 5 or so for for the rest of your run and then an early arc setup to help you get through it a bit faster. The one bar necro combined with scribing is bananas for the archive. This one is peak one bar shenanigans gamers. Of course the written guide is up and available for you over at thegameroom.tv. Let's get it. For this build high elf and imperial are most ideal with nord being a close second. We're running a true hybrid setup split between stamina and magicka use. The high elf spell recharge passive works perfectly. For this giving back a mix of both resources over time, which synergizes perfect with the heavy armor passives, giving you this yin yang scenario of restoring mag and stam both when you deal damage and take damage. The balancing of sustain specifically on the stamina side of things is what's going to be your biggest challenge when learning the build from mid arcs and above. It's a bit of a dance, but we'll get there here shortly. Alternatively, an Imperial will take the edge off of all sustain issues a bit and a Nord will get you back into ults quicker, which is an important concept in general for upper arcs. All 64 points in health and using the Lover Mundus. Neither of these two things will change from Arc 1 until you roll credits. Then we combine all of that with bear haunch food and tripods. For our gear, we're using double crafted sets. The first set is Heartland Conqueror. We're mainly concerned about its 5 set of increasing our weapons trait by 100%, of which we're using the charge trait to generate more status effects. We pair that with the Serpent's Disdain set, which extends the duration of dot status effects by 16 seconds. Very important for kiting to mid and upper arcs. We we topped it off with a heavy pin helm like Krogs, Oaken Soul, and a Frost Staff with the Poison Enchant, which is super important. As you are light weaving your Necro nonsense around, you will also be getting Poison procs on mobs, which are also extended by 16 seconds from Servants to Sane. The way I have traits here is also kind of important, but there's one more teeny tiny bit of min max you can do. This setup on a non Nord will be 32.7k resist, so just a hair off resist cap. You can swap Krogs for any heavy helm with a line of armor, and then you can change one one or two of the Nern traits to Divines. This will have you reach the resist cap, lose some pin by dropping Krogs, and then make a bit of pin back from the one or two Divine traits using the Lever Mundus. If you are a Nord, then you have wiggle room on the jewelry traits to make them healthy rather than protective. But make sure you hit the resist cap of 33k with your minor resolve buff rolling. I wouldn't worry about this though, unless you are really trying to get into the arc eight, nine or 10 area. Under there, it's going to be a bit unnecessary. Go Krogs and lose a pixel of resist. The CP here is the same as every single one of my archive builds from mid to late arcs. Nothing new here if you've seen any of my archive builds. For skills, first we have two huge scribing skills. The first is Warding Soul, set up in this way with Shield, Heal, and Major Vitality. You really want to get these scripts if you don't have them. They are so impactful. This gives you an on-use shield, a heal over time, and then once activated, you get Major Vitality, increasing your shield strength and healing received by 12%. So once you pop this, boom, the shield tooltip is now bigger, giving you an even bigger shield and juicing your healing. With one extended favor vision, this buff extends out to 16 seconds. Any more than one of these visions is overkill. You will for sure be using this more than once every 16 seconds. But having one extension is nice in those one to two sweaty second windows where you get CC'd or something at the end of the 10 second timer. We're using a frost staff due to the tri-focus passive, giving you a meaty shield on every heavy attack. In mid to upper arcs, you'll be weaving in intermittent heavies, one for sustain, two for ferocious support procs if you have that vision, and for constant shielding. Weaving in these heavies in between abilities is enough to literally face tank marauders at certain points. A little trick here for you that you can use in many panic areas is to simply hold down your attack button, do not let go, and right as you fling each snowball, tap your shield. This will give you a double shield every two globals, recover your mag use from your ability shield, and float you through most of the tough mechanics in the archive. Here it is on the Thoat Dragon. This little tactic completely shut down 
any stress it may have caused. Next is healing contingency set up in this way. I've been talking about this constantly for some months now. It's in my opinion that this is one of, if not the best defensive abilities in the game when used in the way that I use it. I know many will disagree, but again, we all play differently. This ability has elevated both many PVP builds on the channel and definitely the archive builds. Some of you have probably heard the explanation a dozen times now, so I won't put you through it again here, but if you haven't, I made a short video I'll link here for you and I'll put in the description for you as well. Plus, you can see it in the gameplay VOD in the description. Even if you are experienced in ESO, if this ability is new for you, I cannot recommend enough that you check out that video, mainly the dodge roll section. This ability introduced some new ways to do some things and the tooltip is not super evident on how to do them. Moving on. Next, we have Scythe. This is one of the main reasons this build pops off so hard. This is a stamina based heal and more importantly, it's a way to stack hemorrhage to multiple targets, which is kind of nuts. The TLDR here is at some point in some way, just make it happen that as many mobs as you can get to get triple tapped to get Hemo stacked as fast as possible. From there, it's a spot heal as you're running through or face taking mobs. It's not really a spammable. If you use it like that, you'll just be totally gassed on stam, get CC'd and die. There is an individual proficiency here at the game that will come into play with Scythe that is going to be different from person to person. You just have to get in there and get a feel for things and learn how to balance it. How much stam you can use and how fast you're getting it back from passes and potions. And then how much Scythe heals you will need around your mag heals and whatnot. There's no perfect recipe for it like Ellie says here. I can say this, it works and it works well when you find the balance, but your balance will be different than mine and the next person. So don't get frustrated with it, be patient, and when you get it down, the build will really shine. But this will be the biggest barrier to entry, so to speak, with balancing this for mid to upper arcs. It's not hard, it just takes a little finesse and some getting used to. Next is Spirit Guardian, easy stuff here. Heals you and reduces damage taken by 10%. Just keep it active all the time. Elisas, kind of the engine behind the whole build, you want to hit ideally every mob with this, which will get your burning rolling on them for 20 seconds with the Serpent's Disdain set, which is just enormous damage. And then it is also your spammable after you get one focused efforts. Before you get a focused efforts, you will be in the early arc setup, which we'll go over next. It also costs nothing, so it helps greatly with the sustain of the build. Next is probably the best ultimate in the game for solo clears, with Vampire Ulti being a close second. This adds 30,000 health, mostly preventing one shots. Your light and heavy attacks heal you, and then you do magic damage around you, which also heals you. It's more or less full immortality more times than it's not. And the biggest takeaway is it lasts 20 seconds, which is wild. That's so long to have the effect of this ult. You should have this up for every third round of every stage. Pre-dot everything with Ellie Sus and Scythe, pop your ulti, stand in business, and Ellie Sus spammable mobs down, weaving in Scythe. It feels like a cheat code at times, honestly. Here it is in Arc 9, where I'm just taking the hugest beating imaginable, CC and everything, and just shrugging it all off. Again, if you need some context for all of this, there is the Arc 8 to 9 push gameplay VOD in the description. For early arcs, this is way overkill defensively. This is what I've been doing pretty much on every class now for gear. Just craft yourself a simple Order's Wrath body set. It's simple and effective and will work for everything. You can go all medium, a mix of medium light, whatever you feel you need for sustain. I run all medium. All of it in divines, ideally, and try and chance if you can. Swap out your heavy crogs for a light crogs and divines. Craft a second set of disdain jewelry with infused traits. Same thing for oaken soul with infused or arcane traits. Same thing for Oaken Soul. Use an Inferno or Lightning Staff. I think the difference is mostly negligible, but I preferred the Inferno here. Drop Ghost and Warding Soul and bring in Force Pulse, which will be your spammable, and Unstable Ellie Wall, which will be more AoE damage plus a solid AoE spammable. And change your CP to DPS CP of Thaumaturge, Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, and Wrathful Strikes. And then you can drop Juggernaut for Rejuvenation and drop Bastion for either Bloody Renewal or Siphoning Spell whichever resource you're struggling more to maintain. You'll still have to weave in heavies here and there for sustain, but that's fine. This is all just a band-aid to get you through early arcs faster. Last, change your food to ghastly eyeballs for max damage and spammable sustain. It doesn't have to be an exact science here. Drop Ellie Wall, Ellie says things a bit, Scythe a bit, spam Force Pulse a bit. You'll get a feel for it. Things should fall over really quickly in lower arcs for you. You can even pick up a DPS ult like Glacial or Comet if you prefer as well. An important one here, starting in arc two for every lower arc until the Marauder is out of the way, keep warding soul in your bars and Goliath ulti. This will give you the tankiness to get through them. If you're still struggling with early Marauders, then use an ice staff with intermittent heavies for additional shielding and your heavy crogs as well. If you're still dying to Marauders in lower arcs, then respectfully said, it's a gameplay proficiency issue and I'm more than
than happy to show you how I clear them anytime on stream if you want to pop in sometime and ask questions or just watch and maybe learn a bit. But you can do it. I believe in you. All of the tools are here for you. You just have to learn how to use them and get in there and make it happen. Boom. It's that easy, gamers. Hey, listen, best of luck in your archive runs. If you have any questions, please let me know. Stay tuned. Next, we have something really special, something I am very excited about. A one bar jab plar currently at arc eight, mainly using jabs. I couldn't believe it. Alrighty, I'm out of here. Have a great day. Tell your mama I said how she during. I appreciate all of you and I'll see you in the next one.